drove off the Cherry Street Bridge into frigid Lake Ontario waters. It's to attempt to use the presence of civilian hostages. ISIS abducts thousands of families in the Mosul area to use as human shields to slow down advancing military operations. The EU and 24 countries have agreed to create the world's largest marine park in the Antarctic Ocean. Chicago Cubs will host their first World Series game in seven decades. They will be up against Cleveland tonight at Wrigley Field. Hi and welcome to Humber News. I'm Hunter Crowther coming to you from our newsroom here at Humber College North Campus. Police officers have recovered a body from a car that drove off of Toronto's Cherry Street Bridge and plunged into Lake Ontario yesterday afternoon. Police recovered the car this morning from the bottom of a shipping channel. The vehicle was damaged at its front and back ends and will be inspected by police. Police say the car was so far out from the initial search area that it delayed the recovery operation until this morning. Uh, we do believe it to be a woman in her 50s. Uh, the vehicle that was being operated was a 2011 uh, Toyota Corolla. Uh, currently, the body has been recovered from the vehicle and has now been transported to Marine Unit for the coroner's investigation. Uh, the vehicle itself is in the, uh, currently being re, um, uh, recovered right now. Police say a passing cyclist jumped into the frigid water to try and rescue the occupant from the vehicle. It was shortly after 4 o'clock when police received a call from witnesses. Police have not yet released the name of the woman, but say they think they know who it is. Overseas, the UN says ISIS forces have abducted tens of thousands of people from areas surrounding Mosul. Men, women, and children are being used as human shields. More than 8,000 families are being forced into captivity to slow military operations. Anyone who refused, killed on the spot. ISIL's depraved, cowardly strategy is to attempt to use the presence of civilian hostages, effectively using tens of thousands of women, men, and children as human shields. Iraqi and Kurdish forces backed by US-led airstrikes have been advancing on Mosul for almost two weeks. The UN is calling the latest ISIS tactic an act of desperation. Iraq is facing what could be its worst humanitarian crisis ever. More than one million people are expected to be displaced by the conflict. Authorities in France are bowing to international pressure to help the young people stranded in the ruins of a Calais migrant camp known as the Jungle. They're bringing in buses to take the children to reception centers around the country. Teenagers spent a second night in a makeshift school after the camp was demolished this week. Aid workers say more than 120 minors slept in and around the school overnight. Some aid workers say that as many as 1,500 children are still stranded in the jungle. A local official involved with the camp eviction says the teenagers will be moved on Monday. Britain has accepted 274 children from the evicted migrants. In Chicago now, for the first time in 71 years, the Cubs will host a World Series game. And in the midst of the Fall Classic with Cleveland, Chicago's been sports lovable losers for generations. But tonight, euphoria hits Wrigley Field. Sanctuary for baseball, where Chicago's youth would skip class to watch Sammy Sosa, Ryan Sandberg, and Mr. Cub himself, Ernie Banks. Heartbreak aches over the Windy City's north side, the wounds from the Billy Goat curse, Sosa's cork, White Sox success, and Steve Bartman's foul gaff are still fresh in Cub fans' minds. Late great broadcaster Harry Carey had a feeling this may happen. Sure as God made green apples, someday the Chicago Cubs are going to be in the World Series. Cleveland won game one, but the Cubs responded with a win on Wednesday. Game three is tonight. First pitch is at eight. A plane carrying Republican vice presidential nominee Mike Pence ran into some problems last night. The plane then skidded off the runway after landing at LaGuardia Airport in New York last night. Pence and his wife were aboard the plane, but no injuries were reported. Press Secretary for the Donald Trump campaign, Mark Lauder, says Governor Pence will resume his campaign. Governor Pence and everyone on board the plane is fine, thankfully. Just some great work uh, by the uh, Port Authority and all the airport authorities, the dedicated flight attendants. There were no injuries. The campaign says Trump called Governor Pence to ensure his safety. Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte had said some strange things over the past few weeks. He told President Obama to go to hell and even called the Pope a son of a bitch. 
But now, he's pledged to stop swearing. At a media briefing in front of an audience at an airport lounge, Duderte explains how God spoke to him during a return flight from Tokyo. He says everyone on board the plane was sleeping when he heard, when he says he heard a voice. I will this, I will bring this plane down now. And I said, who is this? So of course it's God, okay. After God told him that the plane would crash if he wouldn't stop swearing, Duderte swore off cussing. A landmark international agreement is creating the world's biggest marine conservation in the Antarctic. The Ross Sea is home to more than 10,000 species, including most of the world's penguins, whales, seabirds, and colossal squid. Fishing will be banned for 35 years within a million square kilometers of the new sanctuary. Scientists and activists are calling the agreement a historic milestone in marine protection. The agreement was signed by the European Union and 24 countries, including the US, China, Russia, which previously blocked the proposal five times. Now to follow up on a story we told you about yesterday, the World Wildlife Fund released its annual Living Planet report and it predicts some grim numbers for the future. We get more from Laura Dart. Do you think these things are worth protecting? Am I going to be the last generation to see it? That promotional video posted by the World Wildlife Fund could be a reality for younger generations. The report says by the year 2020, we may lose two thirds of our wildlife population and it's entirely our fault says that the global population of animals has already declined 58% between 1970 and 2012. And it says that number could reach 67% in four years. Like we hit the halls to see what you think about this problem. Just being aware of like your actions, they'll always have a reaction. So if you're not a part of the, part of the, uh, the solution, you're part of the problem, you know? The report says some of the biggest threats are coming from loss of habitat and pollution. According to the report, Canadians are living beyond what nature can handle. It says the global population needs 1.6 Earths to provide everything we use in a year. And it says if everyone lived like Canadians, humanity would need 4.7 planets. Humber students we talk to say some things have got to change. I think there would have to be like an entire like like national announcement about it and I feel like there's not enough light shed like on this uh, topic or issue anyway so to get it out there to a mass population of people I think it would need to be like top news. The WWF report says Canada specifically has been largely affected by habitat loss. Caribou were once one of the top species in Canada found in over 80 percent of the country now it's down by more than 95 percent. I think it's really important that um, for people that there is wildlife and technically we're in their home because it's we're in nature and we're we're basically wrecking the whole of the environment so I feel it's it's really sad. To protect what we have the report says we need a transition to a hundred percent sustainable and renewable energy sources as well as a food system that has less waste and reduction in greenhouse gas emissions something that would mean a complete lifestyle change for many people. Lord Art, Hummer News. Animals are the subject of many superstitions around Halloween, especially those involving black cats. But the Etobicoke Humane Society says the celebrations don't have a big impact on adoption rates. Our reporter Alana McLeod has this story. Halloween comes with superstitions, particularly around black cats, but contrary to popular belief, it hasn't affected adoption rates. Tanya Smith, cat coordinator, says that black cats can always be a hard sell, but the holiday hasn't affected the adoption rates. Um, well, we find that it doesn't decrease on a, on a particular month. It just uh, They are a little bit more of a harder uh, colour to get adopted. But we've actually had a phenomenal year this year with uh, cat, black cat adoption. The Etobicoke Humane Society is an independent charity and completely volunteer run. They do not receive government grants, do it strictly out of love. Kat Marincola, staff volunteer, feels confident that the cats live in good conditions and are treated well. Uh, it's just really, it's really awesome like that they're not so caged in and it's just they do have out time and it's really awesome that they get to interact and yeah, so come on by and 
Uh, adopt a cat today. <laughs> Hailing from various parts of Canada, each pet comes with a description of what their needs are as well as their personality. So if you want more than candy this Halloween, stop by your local shelter and consider adopting a cat. So this Halloween, you can get your treats, you can get your tricks, and you can adopt a cat too. Alana McLeod, Humber News. And some heartbreaking images out of China. Animal rights activists have dubbed a mammal named Pizza the saddest polar bear in the world. Pizza lives in an enclosure in a Chinese shopping mall surrounded by paintings of icebergs. His only contact with the outside world comes in the form of an air vent. Animal rights activists have signed an open letter to Chinese officials asking them to free the bear. They say his plight is part of a disturbing trend in China where wild animals are placed in malls to attract customers. Here at Humber, in the middle of the semester, there's lots to stress about here on campus. So how are students coping? And as we hear from our reporter Linda Hyun, they're finding colorful ways to deal with the pressure. Munching, drinking, or working out are common stress relievers here at Humber College, but students are trying something new. A black and white stencil, add in a few coloring crayons, a child's hobby, or a stress reliever. These books have been selling off the shelves, becoming a million dollar product. Let's find out why. It's halfway through the fall semester as students cram for their midterms, and some students have found solace in coloring during this demanding time. So adult coloring books are a great way to reduce stress. So if you're going through a stressful time like midterms or exams, it's a great way for you to reduce your stress, improve cognitive function. So helping to improve your memory. Um, it's a lot of fun. So it's pretty distracting as well. So if you kind of need something to make you more upbeat and happy, adult coloring is a really good way to go. The first successful adult coloring book was published in 2012 and has kickstarted a trend since then. I think it brings back that childlikeness into us like coloring and stuff like that in artistic side that we don't really pay attention to as we get older. I think it's nice and I think it helps people to be more calm and relaxed. Although the graphic design program is a compressed 22-week course, PROS provides students with alternate options. Anxiety levels do get pretty high and stress is high, um, but we have things in place like taking them outside of the classroom to relieve stress, such as brush lettering and adult coloring books. So why does a college program coordinator find himself coloring? Is that your mind doesn't wander and uh, worry about other things throughout your day. You're just concentrating on the task in front of you. Studies prove that anxiety levels decrease when coloring. So with midterm season upon us, coloring may be the therapeutic boost that students need to stay within the lines of this semester. Linda Huynh, Humber News. Snapchat is all the rage now with more users than Twitter. It almost makes you forget about some older social media like Vine. And it seems Twitter wants exactly that. We hear more about it from Natalie Dixon. Vine is shutting down after only three years. In the next few months, Twitter announced that users will no longer be able to make their six second long videos. It's, it's kind of getting boring. It's getting dull and people are more interested in uh, Snapchat and Instagram now. Twitter took on the app prior to its launch in 2013. Vine lets users capture, share, and watch continuous loops of creativity. I don't know, like quick, funny, funny skits. Uh, you know, it's like it's like a quick, quick one. It was fun while while it lasted. So Vine was just kind of there for entertainment, and it it was good for like about a year, year and a half, and then it died down. And I guess it died so much that it shut down completely. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Many say the social medium paved the way to have a voice, make new friends, launch careers, and even push for social justice. Others say it was just entertaining. If, if it weren't for Vine, I wouldn't know half the jokes that I know now, and like it would shut down. Like I don't know. I feel like there'll be like a like a lack of like evolution, sort of. <laughs> like a lot of Vines acted as a news gathering tool, like this one that was used as an exhibit in the Ferguson trial. <laughs> Others caught people making funny faces in awkward moments or situations that just went wrong. Some of the funnier and more memorable ones reached millions of views like these. LeBron James, LeBron James, 
LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James. Officer, I got one question for you. What are those? What are the? Damn, Daniel. Damn, Daniel. Damn, Daniel. Back at it again with the white bands. Others simply just did it for the vine. Do it for the vine. I'm gonna do it. Do it for the vine. I'm Uh, it's like about tortillas and like a bag of tortilla drops and he's like Hurricane Tor Katrina more like Hurricane Tortilla and it's so good. I'm gonna miss that quality stuff. Whoa! <laughs> Hurricane Katrina! More like Hurricane Tortilla! Students here say Vine has reached its expiry date. They're not sad to see it go even though it may have spread some laughter. Natalie Dixon, Humber News. When we come back, we'll tell you what's happening in the world of sports, and Lindsay Wadden will have your three-day forecast. Well, this Halloween weekend is going to be more of a treat than a trick. I'll have your three-day forecast after the break. And just in time for the Halloween weekend, we have a story from Chile about, mum about mummies. But these relics aren't rising from the grave to spread terror. They're asking for help. The world-famous Chinchorro mummies from northern Chile are the oldest discovered mummies in the world. Researchers have estimated the oldest is around 7,000 years old. By comparison, the oldest Egyptian mummy is only 5,000 years old. Scientists in Chile are now asking for the mummies to be recognized with UNESCO heritage status. They say climate change is causing them to dissolve into a thick black sludge. Researchers say UNESCO designation will be the start of developing new conservation tools.